Hello, everyone. I hope you had a nice lunch. I'm, uh, I'm always a little getting sleepy after lunch. It was a very li nice lunch. Okay, the microphone's being adjusted. Um, I'll quickly check, test the sound. Is it? You heard that, yeah? Uh, it was sort of stereo, I hope. Okay. Um, let's see where I am. This is uh, my main slide. It could be could have been the only slide because this, um, well, I in a serious way, it it's d describes the um, rela possible relationship between uh, shapes and sound. The circle is the basis for the sine wave, and the sine wave is the basis for any sound. So um, let's see where. Um, possibly, at the, does, it, does it look like a circle in the big screen? I think it's a little bit like an oval. Pretend it's a circle for now. All right, so if you follow the circle around and you would plot out the vertical position over a time axis, you would get the sine wave. And if you would do the same thing also for the x-axis, I will show that, uh, then you would get uh, the cosine wave, which is pretty much the same thing. Uh, this is a visualization that I stole from the internet just to show you or remind you, you probably had, were tortured with that in high school with the, the trigonometry sine cosine. I was one of those guys who actually liked that stuff. I'm not very good at it, but I really like this stuff. So yeah, you see, you go around the circle, you plot your x and y position and you get a sine wave and a cosine wave. This is the same idea, another stolen vis visualization um, so you see um, where that sine wave comes from. Let me see what my main point was. Right, um, you could also take other shapes apart from a circle and you would get different waveforms. And that's kind of like the beginning of the thing that I try to explore. Um, obviously we'll move on at, s at some point during this lecture where I take not a, a geometrical form but a shape but a letter shape and we will go around that and it will turn into a waveform. So that was my talk, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, more about waves versus, uh, 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 waves versus shapes. Um, there was a guy called uh, Lissajou, a French guy, um, who uh, explored these kind of things. He explored vibrations um, and he had a, a, um, a famous experiment where he would attach mirrors to tuning forks and have a small beam of light projected on those mirrors and see what the projected light beam, uh, what that would look like. Um, so um, th this is an illustration. Uh, it's a huge board that uh, is hanging in the Tyler's Museum in Harlem, my hometown. Um, uh, fortunately, they, uh, they put a nice picture of that on the internet. It's, it's, it's they hang hung it on a wall at a place where you can hardly see it. But anyway, what you see here is um, various possibilities if you have, well, um, the different proportions between the frequencies of the tuning forks. A tuning fork, let's assume that it's a perfect thing, uh, it makes a perfect vibration, it will produce uh, some sort of sine wave-ish kind of thing. And um, the top row of the figures, you see there is a diagonal line, there's some ellipses, there's a circle. The two frequencies are the same, just they differ in phase, like how they're shifted among each other in time. In the second row, they change, the, the one of the frequencies is twice the amount of the first frequency. Anyway, that, um, um, uh, so th this is from waves to uh, uh, some shapes. Um, Right. Uh, I, I have been fascinated s uh, somehow as a, as, a, as a teenager. I already heard about this principle. I, I'm forgetting, th forgetting the details, but as a 15-year-old boy, I uh, uh, had a little ZX81 Sinclair computer at home, and I remember writing little basic code to r map this out, and that was a computer you would hook up to your television, and uh, there this was the best resolution you pretty much could get, so I kind of re imagined how that must have looked like in, the, in, in 1981, how I made that. Uh, these days, I, um, I actually now pro made a program that generates waveforms, and um, I play them back as sound, and uh, to the sound outputs of the computer, I attach an os oscilloscope that will, in real time, plot out the X and Y position, and it will sound like this, and will look like that. So it starts with this roughly the same frequency, then one frequency goes up, and uh, where the, the proportions of the two frequencies are kind of stable, you get a shape that, uh, you see, see if it moves up, it will be chaotic for a while. So uh, I think the left channel stays the same pitch and the right channel goes up or vice versa. I can't hear that well from here. 
thanks to Peter from Blockland for lending me, me his uh, vintage oscilloscope from the early 80s. It's a wonderful machine, very analog. So this is, okay, the, 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 I think we're now going to the progression one to three. So the second note is like two octaves higher as the f than the first note. And I'll torture you a little more with one more octave and then we're done with this one. So this is four to one. Anyway, so waveforms versus shapes. Uh, always fascinated me. Uh, last year I was on a trip making little animations in, in Drawbot application and I revisited the, the Lissajou theme again. So um, yeah, from waves to shapes, this was somehow has been with me for a while. And while researching for this talk I ran across this illustration. Um, I forgot it was fairly anonymous somewhere on a, on a website. Uh, these Images are somehow, shapes are somehow made with lissajou ish kind of algorithms. Uh, sorry for not having a proper credit for that. this. Okay, so I already um, gave it away earlier on the t in, on in the talk that I want to uh, take a letter form and build uh, a waveform out of that and play that as a sound. Yes, I'm going to readjust the mic, thank you. Um, so uh, bear with me for a little while. Uh, um, I will first go through several letters from... Uh, this is what an I from Helvetica sounds like. And listen, it's the same frequency, but the, the timbres change a little bit, right? So that's the harmonics, the overtones that are slightly different. So we trace the outline and the X coordinates become the sounds for the left channel and the Y coordinates, the, coordinates uh, the, the sound of the right channel or vice versa, I forgot even. So that was Helvetica. Let's, uh, I'm going to go, go through a couple of examples. Rockwell with big fat slap serves. Sounds a little stronger somehow. This one is particularly loud. Anyway, but it was, uh, I, when I had this idea to try this out, I was hoping for slightly more musical kind of tones. It stays relatively abstract. Uh, but still, there's some. Th th the next one is, is time. Sorry for the boring uh, typeface choices, but it's kind of. I mean, it does sound a little different if you have a musical ear. And if I shut up, you can hear that there's that there's slightly different timbres to it. And then for say VAG rounded. It is a softer shapes, and indeed you also get softer or rounder, warmer sounds. I mean, there's some sharp corners in there, because indeed sharp corners will translate to harsher frequencies avail uh, available in the signal. Let's see. So, that was that. Again, I was hoping for, when I started out, for maybe some more musical no uh, uh, kind of sounds that perhaps we could even make a little bit of music out of that, but uh, that didn't happen. Okay, wait, uh, uh, before I start this one. So this is, uh, again, the same uh, idea, but now uh, um, just one letter and different typefaces, so that we can... So earlier I tried to show that you hear the differences between letters within one typeface. Now I'll stick with one letter, and we'll just go through a series of typefaces to see what those sound like. Let me see. Much smaller differences, right? Rounder, softer, maybe a little harder, and then that one. Thank you, Lucas, because <laughs> that was indeed our shapes. Indeed, turn into harsh sounds. So that was almost to be ex expected, but it was nice to, to, to see that actually happen. So, um, what was the next chapter? Um, okay, for, so this was, I, I took letter forms and traced the outlines, made waveforms and played them as a, as a sound, but what you just saw was obviously the original letter forms, um, to see if indeed if I can reconstruct from the sound waves, if I can reconstruct letters, I again hooked up the computer to the oscilloscope, and uh, now we're going through the same sequence just with a different letter, uh, but then projected on the analog oscilloscope. So. So this was kind of live to see. I mean, originally I wanted to bring an oscilloscope, but technically that would have been terrible. And 
great. The, the thing was super heavy, so. Uh, almost done. Bear with me. And one more time. Okay, you see, I had some fidelity problems. I mean, the, the, it's, it was not as sharp as it could have been. That's probably because of my amateurish uh, setup. Um, okay, a bit more theory uh, and uh, uh, nerdiness. The fundamentals of waveform. I already alluded to it. The sine wave is the fundamental waveform of any any wave, and we're not specifically talking about sound. This uh, waveforms uh, is something that's used in many different fields uh, of science. Um, so it's, it's, it's about waveforms in general. Um, there, um, let's see, so I already mentioned harmonics. So uh, a sine wave is a very pure tone. Um, okay, I will, I will introduce uh, a guy called Jean-Baptiste Fourier. He has a cool first name, obviously. Um, he was a, he did uh, some really important uh, uh, research uh, for vibrations and, well, waveforms. Um, well, back in the day, uh, the scientists had much broader fields, so this guy discovered all kinds of things. He must have been very smart in math as well, so the things we're talking about here now is mostly to do with math. Um, what he discovered is that you can actually see an arbitrary waveform as a composite of the sine waves of different frequencies and amplitudes. So I'll show you in this example. It starts with a sine wave, and now we're going to add uh, a sine wave of the double, uh, double the frequency, a slightly uh, a smaller amplitude, and then three times and four times. Uh, if you do that until infinity with this particular sequence, you would get a perfect uh, sawtooth wave, a triangular uh, sawtooth wave. So this is just adding har harmonics. I didn't finish uh, uh, the example; doesn't go until infinity. But you see the principle, and uh, if you take not just the next harmonic, if you only take the odd harmonics, then you will end up, so this is three times and five times and then seven times, etc. nine, you will, will end up with a square wave. So that is uh, something that Fourier uh, has discovered and this doesn't only work with these examples, it turns out that any arbitrary waveform can be expressed as a combination of a possibly infinite amount of sine waves. Okay, this is uh, my son operating an old synthesizer. Again, that hooked up to the oscilloscope. Now we're looking at the waveform in real time. Uh, so horizontally we have a time axis. And he's going through a filter that accentuates a certain frequency. So you hear the overtones of the original signal change and we see uh, how that affects the waveform here. Okay, so, uh, so you, you see different waveforms, you hear different sound. Uh, what was the point? Right, I'm going back to Fourier. Um, so not only can you uh, construct waveforms uh, out of a, a, a combination of sine waves, uh, I think the mo an even more important thing that Fourier uh, has developed uh, is the math that uh, you can take a waveform and, and apply math to it. I mean, this is really complicated math that I have no way of understanding. Uh, but what comes out, it's, it's so-called the Fourier transform, and it takes a waveform, and out comes uh, a frequency spectrum. It gives you like which sine waves that waveform is made of. Uh, so you get the frequency. So at the top you see a waveform. In this case, uh, this is just copy-pasted from Wikipedia, uh, a bass guitar note. Uh, you see the repeating waveform. And at the bottom you see a, sp uh, a frequency analysis, but it's done through the Fourier transform. So even though uh, Mr. Fourier did that stuff in the early 19th century, I, I think. Uh, this stuff is still relevant because uh, signal processing is using this, this math uh, uh, very actively. Uh, uh, signal processing in general, but audio processing in, in specific, uh, in particular. So um, at the bottom you see a graph of like which frequencies are, you see some spikes, and indeed those are the harmonics that are th there in the original signal. Now. This is nice to look at, so you see what's there. But it turns out this, on a mathematical level, uh, this is reversible. You can take the analysis of the frequencies and you can build or reconstruct the original signal from that data. So that's what the Fourier transform is about. It goes two ways. Now, obviously, I was 
playing with sound waves from letters that maybe if I do some analysis on that uh, and maybe change something. That's how uh, 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 equalizers uh, in, in, in the audio world and at a digital level how that works. I mean, uh, the signal is analyzed and some frequencies are changed. It's a much simplified thing. But that's how digital audio processing, large, uh, there, there's, uh, and again, from uh, uh, the name Fourier is still super important. There's, there are al algorithms on computer. There's one, the, the most well-known one is the so-called fast Fourier transform. It's a specific algorithm that is named after Fourier because his math is behind it. But real-time filtering is possible. Anyway, I applied this principle on uh, the waveforms that are created from a letter form. So this is uh, a letter that was originally designed by uh, um, David Jonathan Ross. And what I'm applying here to the waveforms is kind of a low-pass filter. I'm cutting out the higher frequencies. So indeed, what you kind of expect, the higher frequencies in the signal c uh, 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 contribute to the, um, the sharper corners. And, uh, well, and it gets reduced. If you take away so much, it gets reduced to, uh, to a fortune cookie or a grain of rice. Anyway, this goes uh, back and forth. So yeah. By playing with that filter, well, we have some other way of maybe looking at round, round corners or whatever. So that is, that is one example. I have another one here that will accentuate one specific frequency as a fairly sharp peak. So there are these the, 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 the waves you now see in the, in the letter form are frequencies that are there in the signal that are just accentuated by this particular algorithm. So you see the higher frequency, the, little, the smaller waves, you see them in the shape. And um, well, and if you the, the the frequency gets lowered now, and if you reach the base frequency, the whole thing is pretty much going to explode into whatever. So we're like this is uh, your subwoofers would now uh, explode. Um, so you see, going back to that. Um, so that um, okay. I have uh, one more example. There, where instead of cutting the higher frequency, I actually boost the high frequencies, and then you get the opposite. Indeed, there are some spikes appearing. So this is happening because of the filtering in the in the frequency uh, uh, spectrum, and uh, well, you get some some ink trappy kind of shapes, and that can go far or not so far. I mean, that's uh, so. These are all little. Uh, uh, robot scripts that I made uh, screen captures of. Uh, the, the math behind this, so this fast Fourier stuff is all available as Python libraries. I didn't have to write any of that in this, uh, this SciPy. If you're interested in this, the SciPy uh, package, which is a huge scientific Python package, contains all the math behind this. I, I just had to hook it up to the right thing. So it looks maybe complicated, but the I didn't even have to fully understand all the math behind it to be able to apply it. I mean, I understand the principles, obviously, but... Um, all right, um, we're already reaching the end of the talk. It's going pretty quickly. Uh, in the next example, so so this was just an, I, I'm taking the the the, uh, the frequency analysis and pretty much changing. You have like this list of different frequencies and the strength. Pretty much, there's some information, and you can well then by numbers change those pr proportions, and then maybe you get round corners, right? So that's how that works before. It just still it doesn't leave the computer. Um, the next step, the, the final thing I did was to actually load uh, an, an audio file that was generated from a letter or a series of letters and load that in an audio application, a, a music software, and apply some filters there. And that is what the, the next little thing is about. So here again you see a peak there in the equalizer. There's one harmonic being accentuated. And you see the original letter waveform at the bottom. It's fairly geometric. Then the signal goes to the oscilloscope, and there <laughs> are letters. And these are just two audio effects. Uh, the, the wavy things are caused by the, that one peak in the, in the frequency spectrum. The fact that it moves slightly is a little chorus effect. So I'm using effects here that were designed for audio, know nothing about letters. And here we are. We have the animation right there. So this was kind of um, a neat thing to, to explore. Again, you, you see the actual waveforms there at the bottom from the X. So left channel, again, left channel X coordinates, right channel Y coordinates, and that's together how those shapes are plotted. And to, well, this, this is logic and, and uh, 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 pretty much professional grade audio uh, uh, software. Um, I 
from the two effects that I applied, I generated another sound file, read that back into a program, and then generated the same thing. Um, but now as a... So one more time, but now with the graphics interpreted um, by another program and just generating. Um, the, the lines uh, go over themselves several times, so that's kind of accidentally creating this cute little drawing contrast that was totally unintended, but looks cute. And this is the final letter that is fading out. So, um, conclusion. Well, uh, so this was a fun ride. To, to, uh, it was nice to see what happens. Maybe, uh, I mean, there's more sound effects that we could perhaps play with and maybe... Uh, um, I, I cheated in one fairly fundamental aspect. Did anyone notice how I cheated? So f all the letters that you've seen only had one contour. <laughs> it's just it's one contour. So with several contours, you would have with two contours, you would have to do the whole thing twice. So but some, the, the it would uh, exactly well it would be a little harder to 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 display on the oscilloscope. Not entirely impossible, but uh, yeah, what can we do with this? Um, it's uh, yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, so... Um.